Hello again and welcome back. So now that animations are all in place, let's set up actually spawning the bow in our hand. So the way we can do this is just like we have our spawn gear uh, function to where we spawn the sword and shield in her hands. Let's... Let's just use that function. I'm going to add a branch to the beginning of it. So this is, if you go into your functions tab over here, I'm doing the spawn gear one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check to see if I've got a sword drawn. Actually, no, no, no. I'm going to use the bow drawn. I'm going to check to see if the bow is what is currently drawn. So if false, I'll just feed stri straight into my spawning sword stuff. And if true, then we can spawn our bow. So what this does is it'll... uh. Because this spawn gear function will only be called in the animations. So we can check there to see whether it's needing to spawn a uh, <laughs> sword or a bow. You get what I'm saying. So I'm going to spawn actor from class. It's from the true. I'll hook that up. And pretty much doing just like we did down here. For the class, I'm going to draw out my bow info break it open or you can just split it but I'm gonna break this one and hook the class directly there and for the spawn transform I'm gonna get my me oh my mesh <laughs> and then I will get socket transform and I will hook that right there and the socket we want is our bow slot that we set up in the last one so you want to make sure that that is spelled exactly like it is right here. Capitalization definitely matters. Now the transform space, I don't want it relative to scale in the world, I want it relative to the actor because that'll go based on the uh, bow slot itself. So if I scale this thing up, it'll change the size of it. So I want it relative to that because that way I can customize it in here if I need it a little. Yeah, I need it a little uh, different. So for the return value, I'm going to drag off and promote that to a variable. That's going to be my bow ref. And then I want to attach it to that socket. So I'm going to attach actor to component. That's what we use down here, right? Yeah. The parent is going to be the mesh. And the socket, I want to attach it to the bow slot. Now, I don't want it to keep relative. I want it to snap to the target that I'm trying to bind it to. Then I'm going to grab my weapon equipped Control C, Control V, and hook that right there. So that's all well and good for the spawning of it. Now we need to actually tell it when to spawn. So in my draw bow function, let's see, right about here is where she's grabbing it. So I'm going to add a notify, and this is going to be my spawn gear. So at this point, she's already been told, yes, I'm drawing the bow, and that's how she got to this animation in the first place, so we don't need to worry about that. And this will say, spawn that thing in her hand. Now, while we're in here, let's go ahead and go to the stow bow and tell it when to destroy it. We don't have that set up just yet, but we will in a minute. So I'm going to right click and add my destroy gear notification because we'll use that function the same way. So let's just test it real quick just to make sure. I get caught in this trap. I do something, I test it out just to make sure. Whoa, what in the world? Oh, right, 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 right. So the problem that I'm having right here with the bow is it has collision still. So I'm gonna go to my weapons real quick, find my bow, because I don't want it to have any kind of collision. That way it doesn't mess with the camera, it doesn't do anything, so I'm just gonna, no collision. So now it'll just, this should still have its collision, but this won't have any. So yeah, I can still pick it up, and when I equip it, it won't mess with my camera anymore. But now she's running around with the bow in her hand. But you'll notice if I try to put it away, 
it just stays. So let's set fix that real quickly. So the way we can do that is in our destroy gear function. I'm not in the functions. Where am I? Destroy gear functions. We can basically just add it to the very end. So just like we're doing all these valid checks, we don't even need to check to see if a sword or if we've got a sword or bow boolean's active. We can just say, is it valid? If it is, destroy it. So I'm going to drag out my bow reference wherever I set that thing. There he is. There it is. Whatever. See if it's valid. I'm going to hook both of these to it so that regardless of the check here, it feeds through and checks the bow is not valid. That means we were destroying something else is valid. Then we want to destroy actor. Compile that. Pick up my bow. And then there we go. What do you know? Now we got a bow. And we're on the go. I'll stop. I'm sorry. So yeah, that was pretty quickly. What we can do is we can go ahead and uh, start getting things ready for setting up firing. So in our player blueprint, once we have our bow equipped, after we shift our camera, I'm going to continue using the melee cam shift just because it works out decently, I think. You can change it up if you like. Uh, I'll probably, I might set up another one just to go through the process again. Um, but then what we want to do is we need to drag out our attack type because when we have our bow equipped, which is on this bottom line, then we want to say that we are in ranged combat mode. I'm going to copy that and move it to the top, hook it up just like that, because when the bow is not equipped, we want to go back to none. That way, when we click the button in a bit, it'll be able to tell, are you, equip are you attacking with a melee weapon or are you attacking with the ranged weapon? So this is all working now, okay. Because this is already set up to make sure that you're not already changing equipment or falling, so it'll be all good right there. So where is my, there it is. So let's check it one more time. Now it's not gonna do anything when I try to equip it right now. Like I'm not gonna be able to do anything, but it's all set up for when we're ready to do that. So, how long is this one now? Eight minutes? I bet we could do it quick. Nah, let's save it for the next one. We're making this one short. I'll try to keep them shorter from now on. So, in the next one, we'll actually go through the process of firing the bow. So, see y'all there. Bye-bye.